Hello, uh, my name is Carlos Rodriguez and I'm back for Profiling Content Part 3. So, um, I, I'm a software consultant with Arc Systems and prior to this video I have Parts 1 and 2 where I talked about in more detail what's involved with profiling content in Sitecore and how does that lead us in the direction we can personalize our site behavior based on identifying visitors that fit into certain profile categories. So um, in this third part, I'm going to focus a bit more on profile cards, personas, how to apply that to items, and then uh, the use of pattern cards, how they're created, and eventually how can I use that to perform personalized behavior on a site. So to recap what I talked about in the first two parts, uh, I went through a discussion of the profiling section of the marketing control panel how underneath profiles you have these profiling categories called dimensions and within each dimensions you have a set of keys which are used to set up a scoring mechanism which can be used to profile content and then based on that collective score determine what type of interests your visitors have or at least what profiles are falling into where that's concerned and how I can use that information to personalize the site to keep them engaged so they can do the things on the site that I want them to do. So in part one, we talked about it a bit more theoretically. In part two, we actually went into how you create profile dimensions, how to create those keys. We discussed briefly how you can apply those to items. And then once you get used to the idea of applying keys per dimension to an item, how can I speed that process up by using profile cards? And I'll recap a little bit of that in this video uh, today uh, before I get into pattern cards. So um, that's where we left off. In the part in which I'm about to cover, I'm going to talk a bit more about what pattern cards are for and what, how can I use them to drive personalization on my site once I have an understanding of what type of pattern my visitor is falling into. So with that being said, I'll put away the slides and let's go ahead and take another look at my site course site. Okay, um, where we left off, is that uh, I talked about the movie's profiles dimension and how for that dimension I have these seven keys and for each key I have a range oops sort of expected that to happen <laughs> okay I'm clicking on the marketing control panel going back to my profile section like I've done in previous parts and as I go into action there we go note that Action is one of the keys where it can have a value falling within the range of 0 and 10, and all my other keys um, have the same exact range. So if I go through each one, you'll see that they all have a range of 0 to 10, which means that each key is equally weighted. Now, when I apply the movie's dimension to an item to indicate that people who view this item are most likely into these type of movies, I have to provide a value for each key that represents the pro movie profile associated with an item. So as an example, if the item a person is looking at is more associated with action movies, then I would probably have a high value in this range from 0 to 10, maybe an 8 or a 9 for action. And if that same item doesn't seem to attract people who are into romance, then for the romance key, I might have a low value, maybe something around 1 or 2. So as I apply the movie dimension to each item, I got to provide a value for each key that represents the likelihood that that individual falls into that profile based on the values of these keys in that particular item. That's how the scoring takes place. However, if I'm doing this for 10 items, it's not so bad. But if I'm doing this for 100 to 1,000 items, setting 7,000 keys could get really tedious. So what I might decide to do instead is create a set of profile cards. And the idea behind the profile cards is that it allows me to preset the key values so that once I apply the card, the keys are set all in one shot. So it's the difference between, let's say, setting 7,000 keys or just applying 1,000 cards. So you would probably agree that applying 1,000 cards would take much less time, be much faster, would speed up the process tremendously. Okay. Now, being a developer, I will freely admit that when I provide a name to a profile card, it's going to be rather descriptive. Um, so if uh, by reading, for instance, that one of my profile cards is Halloween Horror Night, you could probably tell that it's going to be high on horror and most likely low, on, low I should say, on comedy or, or romance or what have you. 
while if I'm dealing with science fiction theater, it'll most likely be high on the science fiction key and low on some of the others. So, um, so and that's because I have a developer's mindset. Uh, but that is not to dissuade marketers who would rather give these profile cards proper names and then use the fields within the cards to be very descriptive about what it means to be this person and what their profile represents. So if I click on something like Halloween Horror Night, what I'll show you is that for that card, I provide a name, I can provide some more detailed information, I could provide a description, and this description, by the way, would show up on the card once it's applied to the item, so that does help in identifying what profile card I assigned to the item. I could provide an image. Uh, well, after all, it is horror. <laughs> And then in the last field below, here's where I preset each key value. Now, in my approach, I'm being rather siloed in terms of how I apply my genres uh, to an item. So because this is Halloween Horror Night, the horror key will get a high value and all the other keys will be zero. That's not to say that it has to be this way. Uh, this is certainly well designed so that if it's mostly horror but maybe a little bit of comedy, I can actually change this to another value. And then now, when I apply this to an item, besides getting the high rating for horror, it gets the low rating for comedy as well. Um, I'm going to put that back to the way it was, but you can mix and, max, mix and match your keys to best describe the type of profile that you're creating for that particular card. Okay, I'm just going to click on Save to ensure that those changes are, are left the way they are. That's the deal with a profile card. If I go to a Persona, it's really also a profile card. The only real difference is that you have a lot more fields to play with in terms of capturing information about the profile. So you'll have a title, an age, description. Besides the image, you could provide family information. Uh, the setting up the same keys. Note that for this one, I'm sharing it between action and animated in terms of using multiple key values. Interests, day of my life, etc. So I'm walking through every single field, but the whole idea behind the persona is to provide you a lot more fields to really thoroughly describe the profile card uh, that this profile represents. So that's really the difference between the two. Otherwise, they're used exactly the same when they're applied to an item. Okay, so if profile cards are about the items you're trying to assign profiles to, which are then collected by the visitors as they go from item to item, then what's the deal with the pattern cards? The deal with the pattern cards is that they're about the visit or the visitor. So when I'm trying to figure out what pattern a visitor falls into, I'm actually using a pattern card for that mechanism rather than a profile card. So the, the thing to remember is that profile cards are about the item, okay? But pattern cards are about the collected profiles as a person goes from item to item, and then based on that collection, what pattern are they more likely falling into? Once you start setting up pattern cards for a profile dimension, after a certain number of item hits, which contain those profiles, they will automatically fall into one pattern or the other. If I click on the pattern card for Date Night Special, uh, note that it has fields which are similar to the profile card, including an image, but it's at the bottom that you would then use a value of keys to sort of represent <clears throat> what type of pattern, uh, I'm gonna use the term pattern, describes this person being associated with this pattern card based on the collected profile card. Uh, this is not meant to be an exact match. The way I would look at it is, if I look at this graph and I compare it to pattern cards, uh, the graphs of other pattern cards, if I was to collect all the person's profile and put that into a similar graph, which graph better represents the collection of profile that person belongs to? Does this graph look closer to what they got? Or does this graph looks closer to what they have? So that's the way I tend to, visual, to visualize it so I understand what role pattern cards play when compared to a collection of profile cards. Okay, so I decided to create two profile cards. I'm a bit siloed in my approach, but note that you can set these keys to any values that best represents that pattern. <clears throat> I have one for a date night, which if you fit this pattern, you like a lot of romance movies. Otherwise, if you're more the Star Wars, Star Trek, Aliens, etc. type, then your science fiction is really high and the rest are low in comparison. So that's how I treat these patterns. Okay, now that I've discussed this in detail, what I want to do now is go to the content editor and talk about how do I assign these profiles <clears throat> to these items 
and also um, let's see if we can get into how I can then use pattern cards to do personalization. Um, if I run out of time for the to do the pattern stuff, that will be in part four. Okay, so in any event, um, as I <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as I uh, talk about how to apply these pattern these profile cards, I'm going to go to the holiday section, and in the holiday section, I decided that if you go to on certain holidays, you like certain movies. So if I go to Battle of the Hills as an example, uh, if I go towards the upper right, it's this icon that's used to set a profile on an item. And if I already have done that and that profile has a picture, that picture will show up or next to the profile icon. In this example, I apply the romantic profile card. So it will give me the name, the image, and the description I gave that card when I defined it in the marketing control panel. If I want to change it for some reason, I would click on the icon. Here I see each profile dimension that's represented in the profile section next to each one. There's an edit link where you can uh, define the profile on that item for that particular dimension. And if you already assigned it a value, that will also become clear in this first window. If I click on edit, okay, then here I can either assign a card or set the keys individually. If I didn't have cards, I would have to click on customize here set each key individually and do that from item to item. So the big advantage of using profile cards is I can leave this customized turned off, choose the card that applies, and I'm done just that quickly. Okay, I'll go ahead and click on OK. I'll click on OK again, and that takes care of those cards. Okay, as I go to Cotswold's Adventure, there I sign Romance, Cycle San Francisco, I sign the Romance profile card. Once I go to Cycle Southeast Asia, I switched cards and I signed the science fiction profile card. So note that I get a title, description, and picture and related to that. And then if I go to Discover Copenhagen, I assign the same profile card there. And if I go to Discover Thailand, I did the same thing. So I decided for these holidays to assign three romantic profile cards, three um, science fiction profile cards. And that takes care of profiling. Okay? So where do pattern cards come into play? Well, let me show you an example. I'm going to go to this particular home item, okay? And let's say I want the behavior on this home item to change if I determine based on your profile activity that you belong to one pattern or the other. And while I'm in this home item, I'm going to go into the experience editor. Okay, and while I'm in the experience editor I'm, and I'm in edit mode, I want this widget to change based on whether I visit vacations that would associate me with a romantic movie preference or one that associates me with a science fiction uh, movie preference. So to set that up for this widget, I clicked on the widget while I'm in edit mode in the experience editor, and as I go up to the view tab, I need to be in designing mode. So those two things are very important. Once I then click on a component, to note that personalization is done at the component level, um, I get the toolbar for the component, and there's the personalization icon right there. If I click on the widget next door, which is not being personalized, note that it just looks like three different size group guys in the button, but if you are actively using it, it will switch to three blue guys, like blue man's group. <laughs> okay, so if I click on this button, I've already set this one up, but I'll still use it as my example of how I put one together. Okay. I'm just trying to get to that part of the toolbar, then I'm going to click on Edit Conditions. All right. So while I'm in Edit Conditions, what I want to show you is that it's here that I set up um, the, the way I want this to personalize based on the profiles that are, that are being used. Note that, uh, first of all, let me start from the bottom. Note that when you do personalization, you're going to have a default setting that says, if I can't tell what condition they belong to up above, this is what I'm going to default to in the very end. So that's why you see the health price offer data source, which is currently associated um, with this item. And But note that for the two above it, if for the movie profile, they belong to the sci-fi guy pattern card, I'm going to advertise Rogue One. Otherwise, if they belong to the date night special movies profile, pattern card, I'm going to associate them with fences. Okay, so right now my part three is running out of time, so in part four I will show you how to set this all up.
Thank you so much and have a good day.